it's 7 30. I'm leaving my campsite now. I'm heading into Capitol Reef National Park. The weather was not good last night. It rained and there were super strong winds. I'm going into the National Park now to do some hiking. It's currently not raining, but I expect that'll change throughout the day. I'm getting an early start on this hike, well relatively early, in the hopes that it won't be too crowded. I'm gonna do at least two hikes in the National Park, both of which are fairly popular, and so I expect that, uh, well I know I will see other people on the hike, but hopefully with the weather like this and with the early start I won't be seeing too many people. This is Fremont River Falls in Capitol Reef National Park. The area behind the, uh, the barrier here is closed. You're not supposed to go actually up to the waterfall. It's a pretty waterfall though. Pulling into the parking lot, the trailhead for Hickman Natural Bridge, and there are zero cars here. The park literature says that it's 0.9 miles and 400 vertical feet to the arch. The Fremont River today is looking pretty energetic thanks to the recent rains. Apparently this little ring, partial ring of rocks, or the foundation of a Fremont Indian pit house. Doesn't look like much to me, but I'll take their word for it. According to the little brochure I have, the Fremonts were here from about 300 to about the year 1300. All of this black rock, these black boulders, are really in stark contrast to the white domes, the white sandstone domes. The black rocks are andesite. And they were carried here from the mountains, the flat top mountains west of here, uh, by floods and storms. The glaciers in the mountains melted, and with that melting came all of these black volcanic boulders. So here's the bridge. It's kind of hard to see with the rock behind it, but you can see it. That's the opening right there. It is 133 feet wide and 125 feet tall. How can you not love arches? It's just so cool. One last look at the back side of the bridge before we head back. This is a beautiful place, this Capitol Reef National Park. I'm just a few minutes from the trailhead now. I didn't see a single person this entire time. That's amazing. The parking lot was full when I drove past at about 3 p.m. yesterday. So the Cassidy Arch viewpoint is right here. This is the arch I'm hiking to. hike up there is 1.7 miles each way and gains 670 feet in elevation. Well, again, I'm the only car here. It's 916 and I'm excited to go see that arch. It looked pretty high up there in that little video that I just showed from the viewpoint. So Cassidy Arch, the, the arch that I'm hiking to, is named after Butch Cassidy, the uh, 
the infamous Wild West outlaw. Apparently he had a hideout here in this canyon in Grand Wash. There is the arch. The trail itself to this arch is much more rugged and steeper and frankly more interesting than the trail than the hike up to the last arch to Hickman Bridge. This is a beautiful hike. Sometimes the trail here is kind of hard to follow, and so you need to follow the lines of rocks like this, like this is shuffling me to the right. All right, Cassidy Bridge, no, Cassidy Arch. This is the top of the arch. It's pretty big. Like, it's certainly not narrow. You can't even really tell that you're on an arch until you get right over to the edge. It's almost 11.30 now. I need to go into town. I'm going to go into Torrey, which is just on the west side of Capitol Reef National Park. And uh, I need to get online and do some work. If I don't get reception there, I'll continue further west to Bicknell, which is just a town, you know, 10 or 20 minutes past Torrey. And then once I do that, I will plan my next move. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do for the rest of the day after that. I think that for today I'm done with the National Park, I'm done with Capitol Reef. There are other things I could do, but uh, I'm going to give my hip a little bit of a rest. If you don't know, I had hip surgery a uh, handful of months ago, and it's doing well, it's healing well, but if I push it too much then it starts to get a little bit achy. And it was okay this morning, but then coming down from the, from the hike there it was starting to get a little bit achy, so I'm just going to take it easy for most of the rest of the day. Uh, if I do go on, go on a hike later today, it'll be because I've rested for a good chunk of the day. Okay, it's two o'clock. I've been at a visitor information center here in Torrey. For the last, I don't know, hour and a half or so. Great little spot, good Wi-Fi. I had to get some work done, so it was really good to whip the laptop out and uh, get online and check email and all that good stuff. I need to get to the town of Escalante, which is an hour and a half away. The visitor center there closes in two hours, so I need to get a move on. I need to get, a, to get some uh, a camping permit. I'll talk more about that later. But um, this drive between Torrey and Escalante, I've done it before. It's a great drive, it's a beautiful drive. Um, so I'm excited to show you that. Uh, I won't be stopping too much because I do have to get there pretty quick, but I'll stop and show you a little bit. This road is awesome! I am now 
now in Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. That's what I've been driving through with these amazing views. Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument is kind of a mouthful, and so people usually just refer to this area as Escalante. That's the name of a town, the town that I'm driving to, but it's also the name of the greater area around it. Okay, let me get you up to speed here. I went to the visitor center here in Escalante, uh, the visitor center for Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, and I got a permit, a camping permit for a few nights. You need a permit to camp anywhere in the monument. So I did that, and then I went into the grocery store right here. Got a few more supplies, got some more crackers and cheese and an avocado. You know, the, the staples. <laughs> And now it's four o'clock. I'm gonna go find a campsite. It's 4.40 and I have found a campsite. It's not incredible. It's nice, like it's good. It's not, not great. I passed by some great ones, but I wanted to be closer to where I'm gonna be tomorrow, where I'm gonna be hiking tomorrow. I'm parked right now behind this little uh, juniper tree. I wanted a bit of a wind break. There's this really cool rock formation over here that I might go check out later. Lots of slick rock. And then some high mountain views, some uh, the high plateaus. There is one very interesting thing about this campsite. And that's what's on the ground here. So these, these round stones are called Moki marbles. This is what they look like on the inside when they're cracked open. Let's see, here's another one, a smaller one. I'm not a geologist, so I don't know exactly how they're formed, but there's a particle of some sort, a mineral of some sort, and then that was coated slowly with other layers of the mineral, and over time, the, it formed a coating over the outside, and so uh, that formed a circular marble-like rock. And they're all over the place. I mean, there are a lot of broken ones around here, but there are also a lot of whole ones. It's a cute little one. Grand Staircase Escalante is known for these things, for Moki marbles. You can't collect them from here. Um, it's a federal offense or something like that. You're not supposed to remove minerals from the National Monument. Here's a good look at what's on the inside. Some of the bigger ones almost look like flying saucers heat up some little smokies for dinner. More Moki marbles. These things are so cool. And this entire area is just covered in thousands and thousands of them. The biggest ones I've seen are about the size of a baseball. Okay, I think I'm gonna go take a walk over to this mountain over here. So I'm over at that mountain. Took about 14 minutes to get here. I'm guessing it's about 300 feet tall, three or 400. And here's looking Straight up. What I think is really, really fun about Utah is that if this mountain were basically anywhere east of the Rockies, it would be a national monument, a national park, 
something, even outside of Utah and other places in the West. It's pretty spectacular. It would, it would stand out. But here, I don't even think it has a name. It's just yet another pointy mountain of rock, of sandstone. Boiling up some water for tea now. Tonight we're gonna have blueberry super fruit. It's still windy, it's been windy for well, basically this whole trip. Last night the wind was so bad that my car was shaking pretty violently. I was, I almost got to the point where I was worried it might get flipped over. Obviously it didn't happen, but those are the kind of things that go through your head when you're sleeping in a car. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and let me know what your favorite part of the video was. Thanks.